So here are these two properties. Firstly, given any input x that belongs to the set A, given an input x, that input is a valid input to this function, meaning this function must be able to compute an answer based on that input x. We say that the function will return that answer. That answer we will call f of x. And by the way, that answer must belong to the set b. So the function f takes an input that comes from set a and it produces an answer that belongs to set b. That is the first property that the function must satisfy. Secondly, this answer f of x must depend only on input x. What that means is, if I give you the input x and I call this function twice, firstly on input x and then again on the same input x, the answer f of x must be the same. It cannot change because I gave you the same input x. If I gave you two different inputs, let us say x and y, then it's possible that f of x and f of y are different. Although sometimes we will see functions that happen to produce the same answer even if certain inputs are different. However, given the same input x, the function cannot produce two different answers on the same input. That is why we say the answer depends only on input x. So these are properties of mathematical functions. I will now show you some built-in Python functions. In fact, we have already seen one example of a built-in Python function, the ORD function. So here in the REPL, I'm calling the built-in ORD function. The x that I'm giving it is within single quotes. So the ORD function is expecting an input that is of type string, which is why I'm passing it a string in single quotes. Now what is the, uh, the letter inside the string? Well, that is the double quote. So this may be a little bit hard to read, but it is a string containing a single letter, and that single letter is the double quote. And what you can see is the ORD function, when I press enter in the REPL, it's returning an answer. It's returning the answer 34. So the inputs to this ORD function appear to be strings, and the answer appears to be an integer. If I ask the REPL what is the type of ORD, it confirms that this ORD is a built-in function. Now it says built-in function or method. As we have briefly mentioned, there are things called methods which are a little bit similar to functions. But in this course, we will not really take a close look at methods. This is something I would like you to learn on your own or as part of a future course. Now, if the input to the ORD function can be any string, then it should be possible to call the ORD function on this string. In this string, I have a single quote. And then there's no space, I have another single quote. So I have nothing in between. We call this the empty string. So what would happen if I call the ORD function with the empty string? What answer will it produce? Well, let's try it in the REPL. I get an error message. I get a type error. It tells us that ORD expected a character which is a technical name for a string of length 1. It expected only a single letter. But it's telling us that you gave me a string of length 0. And that is not allowed. So for the ORD function, the input set A, the set of valid inputs to the ORD function, are special types of strings. They must be strings that are actually a single character long. So strings 
of length 1. The empty string is not allowed, it gives you a type error. You should try on the REPL what would happen if you gave the ORD function a string that is longer than 1. Once again, if what I just said is correct, that the only valid inputs are strings of length 1, then once again you should expect a type error. But do try this out. Now, just as a brief aside, you notice that the type uh, function that I have used, I have called it the type function. Let's confirm if the type function is indeed a function. We can actually in the REPL say what is type of type and it tells us that that is actually not a function, it's of an object of the class type and indeed other things that we have seen, for example, float and int and stir are also objects of this special class type. Now, despite this technical fact, I in this course will slightly abuse this notation. I will refer to type and float and int as functions, although technically they are not actually functions. This simplification is okay for us to make in this introductory course.